morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of a vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the, over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system, the human body, is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're dealing with a health challenge or a loved one is dealing with a health challenge, let us help you. 844-236-6010. We can show you how simple and easy it is to reverse chronic degenerative disease, to wean yourself off your prescription drugs, to get on a good nutritional supplement program. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, if you're dealing with wrinkles or fine lines or hyperpigmentation, dark spots on the skin, or if you have a kid with acne or if you have acne and you're breaking out, you want to take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel. Also take a look at our Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream and Truth Balm, all made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. All 100% active and functional ingredients, all made with lots of vitamin C and our retinol 5% gel. Of course, it's made with 5% retinol. You're not going to see that anywhere. 5% retinol gel. Check out truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so... Last program, we were talking about eating in the brain. We've been talking about brain health, mental health, and eating behavior now for a few days, all as it regards the youth and fertility hormones, DHEA, pregnenolone, and progesterone. I've not forgotten. We've got lots to say about those hormones, but I think it's really, really important to understand what is the fundamental cause of all chronic degenerative diseases? What is the fundamental cause of all our health misery? And that is eating behavior, food, and digestion, and the brain, and its relationship. The relationship of our mental nature to our eating behavior. I call it mind hunger. Mind hunger is a kind of hunger that's initiated not by our bellies, not by our physiology, but by our mentality, by our mind, mind hunger. And it shouldn't be surprising that we let our thoughts and our mental nature control our hunger drives. We're mental animals. We see the world mentally through the mind as much as, if not more than through the body. Lions and tigers in the wild don't eat when they're bored. They don't eat when they're depressed. Only humans and maybe domesticated animals eat for mental reasons, for mood reasons. And our mental nature doesn't only control our eating drives or our desire to eat, it also controls our choices. We say things like, oh, I deserve some French fries, or I deserve chocolate, or I should have more protein, or hey, uh, uh, eggs are good for me. These are all ways that the mind affects our eating decisions, how we or what we decide to eat, as well as the fact that we're eating. And the price we pay for eating mentally, the price we pay for letting our mental nature override our physiologic drives to eat is distress, is sickness. And after working with unhealthy people for over 30 years now, this is the conclusion that I've come to. The fundamental cause of our collective poor health is food and digestion. And of course, if you've listened to this program for any length of time, 
that comes as no surprise. But this idea is really, it's really critical to understand because it's a shortcut for addressing all our health issues. Whatever your health challenge is, focus first on food and digestion. If you, did, if you just do something as simple as not eat, fasting, for most, at least many, but probably most health challenges that are chronic and progressive and degenerative and inflammatory and involve the immune system, you'll start to feel better. And I know that sounds almost crazy unless you've experienced it or unless you've been listening to me now for the last six years on this program and the last 20 years that I've been talking about it. It sounds, it can't be that simple. It is that simple. It is. If you're sick, try it fast for one day, two days. If you don't believe it, Google it. Look up fasting and chronic degenerative disease, fasting and cancer, fasting and chemotherapy, fasting and inflammation, fasting and multiple sclerosis. And I'm not sitting here saying that fasting is some kind of panacea. It may be, but that's not my point. My point is that we underestimate the power of eating and food and digestion and its relationship to sickness at our own peril. And there are rip-off artists at every turn that will exploit our reluctance to look at the simple solution. They'll sell us formulas and they'll sell us drugs and they'll have us tested and they'll do us CAT scans and MRIs and go to specialists left and right, here and there, to and fro. We will go to the ends of the world to find a some medical professional to give us an MRI or give us a prescription drug or a magic formula or magic remedy rather than looking at home like the Wizard of Oz, just like the Wizard of Oz. She was home all the time. She was dreaming. She thought she was in another country. She was dreaming, but she was home all the time. Likewise, we think we need to go to the ends of the earth to find a magic formula and we're home all the time. The healing process is built into our bodies. It's right here. The divine force is built into our bodies. We don't need to go to any priests. We don't know to get, need to go to any churches. It's all within us. And I'm not the first person to say that. The kingdom of heaven is within. The kingdom of healing is within. So, this is all to say, by the way, that if eating behavior is behind our sickness, if eating behavior is uh, changing eating behaviors behind our wellness, there's other things, too, that we can that eating behavior can modify our brain health. Every time we eat food, we go through a high blood sugar, low blood sugar spike if we eat the standard American diet, and that puts us in a lousy mood. Blood sugar goes up, then the blood sugar goes down. We end up grumpy, hypoglycemia. Not only that, but weight loss. That's another issue. Everybody is, is obsessed with losing weight, and we got Weight Watchers, and Jenny Craig, and Nutrisystems, and Marie Osmond, and they say you can eat all the chocolates you want and still lose weight. Weight loss is a direct result of Eating behavior or weight gain is a direct result of eating behavior. Likewise, weight loss. So not only are you going to feel better, you're going to lose weight. Once we start to eat physiologically and not med mentally, once we eat because our bellies want to eat, because our bodies want to eat, not because our minds want to eat, we're going to lose weight. A lot of it. I lost 50 pounds by learning to drop my attention into my belly. I was 50 pounds overweight about seven, probably seven or eight years ago. It happened gradually. But one day, and I've told this story before, one day about eight years ago, I looked at, I, I got on the scale. I was 50 pounds more than I should have been. 50 pounds than I was my whole life. Happened over the course of a couple years, and I just took correct, emergency corrective measures. And what I did was I realized that every time I wanted to eat, or the vast majority of times I wanted to eat, I was eating because I thought I wanted to eat, because of my mind. And so I learned to drop my attention into my belly. Learn to move your attention around. We talked to Dr. Nate Klemp yesterday about the, this idea of attention. Do you know that when you place your attention on something, the brain's pleasure hormone, dopamine, the reward hormone, dopamine, is increased just by placing attention. Learning to place our attention consciously is a powerful, powerful technique. And it's especially powerful in the body. When we learn to place our attention in our bodies and in our bellies and in our stomachs rather than in our heads, we'll find we're eating a lot less food. Check it out. Next time you think you're hungry, move your, learn to place your attention to the lower part of your body, to your belly, to the middle of your body, as opposed to your head. And just notice that you're not necessarily going to be hungry there. Our eating is not to satisfy real hunger, it's for pleasure. We eat for pleasure. We eat for brain chemistry. And you know what? The brain's never satisfied. The mind is never satisfied. That's why we overeat. Our bellies can be full, but we're still going to eat. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. We are back 
back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour, as we always do, and uh, try to call in early, and then we'll get to as many calls as possible. And I love talking to you guys, so don't be shy. People call me sometimes on the phone, and they're like, I wanted to call on the radio, but I was too shy. Don't be shy. This is fun, okay? And I like it, and we can help you. 844-236-6010. If you have a success story, of course, we'd love to hear those. And if you just want to contribute to the conversation, please do that as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, or call the phone team at 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with, or if you're about to have surgery, or you want to prevent scarring from a wound, check out our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. If you're dealing with acne or blemishes, or you just want a nice anti-aging product, check out our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking about food and eating and ways to control eating, learning to move your body down, or your attention down into your body, into the lower part of your body. First of all, just learning that we have this thing called attention, that usually our attention gets directed to shiny things. Usually our attention gets directed naively without consciousness just without our attention gets directed without us paying attention and i love that phrase by the way paying attention that points to the fact that our attention is a resource we pay it it's like cash and you want to be spending your attention wisely if we're spending our attention mentally we're, first of all we're missing our lives that's what dr Clemp was talking about yesterday the more we spend attention in our minds the less we're present the less we're living our lives that's how it happens that we wake up one day and we're 50 years old or 60 years old and we missed our lives. That would be the worst nightmare. That's not going to happen to me. I hope it doesn't happen to anybody, really. You wake up and you're 70 years old. What the heck happened to my life? That's because we live our lives mentally. We spend our, our, our attention, we pay attention mentally. So learning to pay attention to the belly is super important to lose weight. Super important if you're dealing with a chronic long-term degenerative disease. Especially if you're in fear. We've created this culture of fear, a society that is dripping with fear. We are immersed in fear, which is the opposite of love. Every, you ever hear about love on the news? You ever hear all the love that's going on in the news? No, you only hear about fear. And isn't it ironic because there's way more love than there is fear. But because the, we're hardwired to find, consider fear to be more important because love's not a survival threat, fear is. So. Fear plays on our hard wiring. We're predisposed to negative bias. We're predisposed to seeing the dark side. We're predisposed to being scared. And guess what? There are predators left and right that will exploit that. So we got a culture that encourages us to be miserable. And then it surrounds us with food to take care of the misery. How do you like that? They promote the fear, promote the misery, and then promote the food to take care of the fear and the misery. How sneaky is that? terrorism and taxes and viruses and the new world order and the globalists and then McDonald's and peanut butter cups and Ben and Jerry's come to the rescue. This is nasty stuff, folks. We should be so ticked off about this. And it's been going on for a long time, especially since the industrial uh, revolution in the mid mid 19th century when, when profit margins skyrocketed when they figured out how to how to uh, mass produce food artificially uh, synthetically in the middle of the 19th century there's actually a disease called neurasthenia it was a brand new disease doctors christened this thing neurasthenia which basically means a lack of energy or specifically a lack of nerve energy it was a disease that only affected rich people it was a disease that only affected uh, high powered relatively wealthy Americans. Today we call them type A people. And so doctors back in the 1860s and 1870s, they noticed that the most educated and the most cultured and the wealthiest of Americans were suffering from migraine headaches and digestive problems and fatigue and depression, mental illness, none of which seemed to be related to any specific causes. They would just say that the patient is suffering from a case of the nerves. And this was a brand new thing. This was a unique condition, the nerves. Pretty obviously, it was a result of the culture. It all of a sudden appeared in the 1860s as the industrial, industrial revolution was kicking in. It was a cultural phenomenon. And guess what? Well, they don't call it neurasthenia anymore, but it's still going on. 
They call burnout or they call it PTSD or clinical depression or chronic fatigue, maybe fibromyalgia. And oh yeah, they got plenty of remedies for that, particularly antidepressants. One out of 10 Americans is on an antidepressant. And we still don't know if they work, and there's a lot of compelling evidence that says that they don't. At least they don't work as they don't work any better than placebo. There's a really cool book called The Emperor's New Drugs by a guy named Erwin Kirsch. And he did a he did a meta study, which is a study of studies, where he studied a bunch of studies, and he found that for the most part, these things are placebos, antidepressants. And when we don't medicate with drugs, we self-medicate with food. And because of the profits that are made, uh, that are to be made in the food by producing food by big-time corporations, mega national corporations, this is encouraged. We're encouraged to eat to feel better, which is a complete abuse of our bodies and digestive systems, and ultimately, it can't help but cost us our health. We eat to feel pleasure. We eat for dopamine. We eat for serotonin. We eat for brain chemistry. But here is the good news. Here's the bright side. We can access that same brain chemistry through healthy mechanisms. First of all, we, if you want to eat, you can eat dopamine foods. You can eat more protein, and protein tends to be one of the more satisfying foods. There's also non-medical, non-eating ways to, uh, to access this brain chemistry. I love these simple non, uh, non-eating ways for accessing brain chemistry and turning them on. How you hold your eyes, how you hold your body, your posture, what you pay attention to, your breathing. The reason I love these is because they're so simple. You could do them anywhere. And they are just as medical as an antidepressant drug. And we're not taught this. These simple little strategies are just as medically valuable, as pharmacological, as drug-like as an antidepressant, as a Prozac. You know, especially when you consider Prozac and many of these antidepressants are placebos or don't work any better than placebos. And by the way, this whole nonsense about uh, brain chemistry out of balance, my brain hormones are out of balance, rebalancing your brain hormones, this silliness. This, that's a, do you know that's not, that's not science? There's no science about balancing brain hormones. You could go on, uh, on Google Scholar or PubMed, which are two scientific sites, or you can go to the library and medical library and research all you want. You're not going to see any scientific studies that even mention rebalancing your brain chemistry. It's purely marketing and advertising. We are drugged in large part for marketing and advertise, uh, from marketing and advertising reasons. But remember, we could do this ourselves. We can lose weight ourselves. We can reduce the impact of inflammatory, that is to say, all chronic degenerative disease ourselves. We can redirect our blood flow from our digestive tract to our, to our uh, uh, repair and recovery systems. We can conserve resources for the good stuff, for building, growing, fighting cancer, degenerative disease reduction, creativity, fertility, a general sense of well-being, simply. And one of the simplest, easiest ways to do that is to control eating behavior and to make sure we got abundant nutrition, to make sure that we're supplementing and we're eating nutrient-dense foods, and then, of course, working on how the body processes those and absorbs those through the digestive system. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or formulations or skin health issues, or if you just want to comment or share a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. From the Journal of Evidence-Based Medicine, Hatha Yoga is beneficial for reducing anxiety. This was a study of studies, a meta-analysis, a meta-study that found that yoga was beneficial for people who have elevated levels of anxiety. According to the authors, Hatha Yoga is a promising method for treating anxiety. Basically, Hatha Yoga is nothing more than just stretching and holding your body in certain positions. Not complicated. Certainly, you don't need a doctor for any of that. And you don't need any Prozac for any of that. And not only will you improve your health or improve your anxiety, but you'll improve your health overall as well. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Let's go to Kathy in St. Louis. Good morning. Welcome to the bright side. Good morning. Good morning. What's going on? Um, I just recently had an echo 
stress test with the uh, dye in it. Okay. And they took pictures before, and then they took pictures after. Okay. The, the pictures before showed nothing. After okay. the stress test, which I passed with flying colors, echo test, flying colors, um, they said they saw a shadow. So I am a past breast cancer survivor. Okay. Uh, well, I still am, sorry. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'm more concerned with this shadow they said they saw because when I went to the cancer doctor recently, okay. um, they didn't see anything except for some tissue in the breast from the cancer surgery. You're saying they found um, a shadow in, the, in your chest area? Uh, the doctor, the cardiologist said it was in the lower part of the heart. Okay. Right underneath the left breast. Uh, okay. But Here's the deal. Here's the deal, Kathy. And I, I, I don't need to really hear any more to help you, because it's very simple. How old are you, first of all? I'm 58. And what kind of med are you on a medication now? I'm on Xanax for a major chronic anxiety attacks. Okay. And that's the only one. That's the only major medicine I'm on. Yes, and a baby aspirin. Okay. All right. Here's the deal, Kathy. We're going to get you healthy, but we're not going to pay attention to the specifics of it. We're not going to pay attention to the anxiety. We're not going to pay attention to the heart. We're just going to make you healthy. That's what okay. that's really what you need. The doctors okay. are going to want you to look at your heart, and the psychiatrist will go, want you to look at the anxiety issue, and the lung doctor will want you to look at, look at the lungs. But that doesn't get you better. Those are the right. leaves on the tree, okay? The lungs, the heart, the anxiety, those are like leaves on a tree, any kind of uh, uh, disruption in the breast or the heart or in the anxiety represents a diseased leaf on a tree. Does that make sense? You follow me? Picture a tree. Yeah. Your diseases are leaves on a tree. If you've got a tree and the diseases and the leaves are diseased, where do you think, what part of the tree do you want to work on to get rid of the disease? The root? Yes, exactly. Not the leaves. You tell the bonehead doctor that you need a root doctor, not a leaf doctor. So here's okay. what you do. The root of all chronic degenerative diseases, including cancer, is the circulatory system. And the place where the circulatory system becomes corrupted is the food, is digestion and food. This is the key to understanding degenerative disease. I always talk about food and digestion, but really the bridge between food and digestive problems and the disease, whether it's anxiety or breast cancer or heart disease, in your case, Kathy, is the circulation. Now, circulation is technically called the blood and the lymph. Now, you've heard those terms probably, right? Especially the lymph, you probably heard, because breast cancer yeah. is a lymph cancer, right? Have you heard those terms, Kathy? I've heard the term, but they told me it was caused from the estrogen that I was on. Well, they're being very simple-minded. It's not caused by the estrogen you were on. It's caused by estrogen in the lymph. It's caused okay. by the lymphatic system or estrogen affecting the lymphatic system. Estrogen is just a, a chemical. It has to get in the circulatory system and it has to affect the circulation for it to have its effects. So the problem okay. is in the circulation. So first of all, you gotta clean the blood. Always, that's the first move. I always say digestion of food, but what I really mean is clean the blood. So you do it by number one, stopping the entrance or, or, or putting up, uh, cutting off the entrance of toxicity into the circulation through the intestine, through the digestive tract. Now, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of ways to do that, and you should be doing all of them. Number one, stop eating for a couple of days. Do a, a, a Swero V cleanse. Go get, if you're doing longevity products, get the Swero V. And that's S U E. It's called Swero V, S U E R O, Swero V I V, or maybe V I E, V, V I E, Swero V. I think I got to check that, but Swero V is what it's called. And you want half a bottle every hour for two days. You're going to feel better right away. Now, you have to eat, obviously, after that. So you want to do, a, a, after you, when you start your eating again, eat very carefully and pay attention to what's happening after you eat the food. If you eat simply, it's much easier. Just eat, just eat simple foods. Just have a piece of chicken instead of chicken salad sandwich. Just have a piece of tuna instead of a tuna salad sandwich. Just have a peanut. Just have peanuts instead of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You follow me? Just eat very simply so you can see how your body's reacting to things. Guaranteed, okay. you're going to find some stuff that is going to be very distressing because you've probably been eating the wrong food your whole life, your whole life, and your solution, the solution to your problem, could be something as simple as just correcting that or at least the beginnings of the solution. Then you're gonna to okay, wanna to start well, work, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, oh, I'm okay. already, my husband got me started on the uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Good. 
I'm going to get you. I'm going to get into that in a moment, but I really want you to get the food thing under control. Get on the nightly essence, which is probiotics. Do three capsules three times a day. And this is very important. The next thing I'm going to tell you, one of the major ways, one of the best ways that you can improve the circulation of blood and lymph through the body is movement. Now you can do a, a mini trampoline, jumping up and down on a mini trampoline. You could do brisk walks, especially up and down the stairs. Even slow, deep breathing will improve the movement of fluid through the blood and through the lymph, through the circulate, circulatory system. Plus, slow, deep breathing will relax everything, especially when you're having an anxiety attack. So right. focusing on the breath is extremely important. Practicing slow, deep breathing will also improve circulation. Okay. Now, there's many, 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 many more things to do. That's a start. I also think it's a good idea for you to get on the Healthy Start Pack, which you're already doing, and make sure you're sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine slowly throughout the day and using yeah. nine EFA capsules a day, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night, and I'd be doing two capsules of the Beyond Osteo FX. Now, I really want to emphasize to you this is just the beginning, but I equally want to emphasize this to you. You can turn this around yourself. You can be a new woman in 30 days, and you can completely eliminate your risk for a heart attack, for further recurrence of cancer, for all the other horrible things that can happen as we, uh, as we age and as our body falls apart. And on top of that, you can dramatically reverse or completely eliminate the anxiety as well. All right, so you got plenty to start on. Stay in touch with us, and we'll add some stuff on as we go through the, the days and the weeks. But within 30 days, you can be a new woman, Kathy. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to let you go. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to Cody in Austin. Good morning. What's going on, buddy? Welcome to the Bright Side. How's it going, man? Going good. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Hey, I got questions about two of my family members. Um, All right. One of them has lung cancer, okay. arthritis. What kind of, how far along is the cancer? Uh, that I don't know. You don't know. Okay, we got to take a break, Cody, so hang on, and we'll, uh, we'll answer your questions when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this. Talking to Cody in Austin, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. Cody, what's going on? Lung cancer and uh, and you said something else? Lung cancer, arthritis, and COPD. Okay. So here's the deal. Who is this person? This is my grandmother. And how old is she? She's 75. Okay. So you got to do what you can do. She's 75 years old, and while it's true that the body can reverse all chronic degenerative diseases, including lung cancer, at the age of 75, you got to start somewhere, and you don't want to start at complete reversal. You want to start at having her feel better. In fact, that's how you really want to handle all cancer issues. You want the patient to be stronger. Does that make sense, Cody? We want to make your grandma strong. We want to make her into a into a, a, a Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, you know you could be 79 years old and, and bench press and squat and do incredible weightlifting, not... You know, I'm not saying your grandmother's going to be doing that, but it's conceivable that the body can do it. I was just watching a video of this where 79, 80-year-old women were bench pressing and squatting and doing deadlifts. One woman was, did a 200-pound deadlift, and she was 79. This is what the body's capable of doing. Now, Cody, I'm not saying for your mom, your grandma to go in there and start bench pressing, but I'm just telling you that this is what's possible. So we're going to make her stronger, all right? First thing you want to do is you, you want to correct any digestive issues because if she's not absorbing her food, she's not going to feel stronger. If she's not absorbing her nutrition, she's not going to feel stronger. So I guarantee you 100% she's got some digestive issues. If you can get her to wean herself away from foods that, that will cause digestive problems, that's great. But a lot of times older folks don't want to do that. So what you can do is you give her liquid soup, liquids, uh, liquids and soups, I should say, vegetable juices and chicken soup especially. Also, if she can do beans, lentil soup, high protein soups and vegetable juices. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. The bone soup will go do double duty because in addition to giving her a good source of protein, it will also give her the, the cartilage factors from the bone. I'm talking homemade chicken soup here. I know you probably heard me talk about this. And so uh, between the protein and the cartilage factors, not only will she get a good source of easy to digest protein for building and for repairing, not only will she get cartilage factors that are important for uh, strengthening the immune system, but the cartilage factors from the bone soup and some of the 
um, uh, saccharides, polysaccharides from the vegetable juice will soothe and coat the digestive tract and make it easier for it to heal itself. Okay. Not only will she be getting good nutrition, not only will she be supporting her immune system, but she'll be supporting digestive health too. And of course the fiber will also help, uh, well, that's a weird sound. The fiber will also help um, help her intestines too, the fiber that she gets from the vegetable juice. As much of her calories and her eating can come from soups and juices, the, that's how, the more you can get her to do that, the better off she'll be. Does that make sense? Okay. Good. Next thing, healthy star pack and have her sip on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. I would throw in the ultimate selenium, which is important for the entire immune system, but particularly for cancer. And, of course, the probiotics, the nightly essence, and the ultimate enzymes. Have her swig on a little apple cider vinegar with her meals. Now, because the cancer and the COPD involve the lymph, and because uh, the arthritis involves a breakdown in the joints and connective tissue, moving her body around can help everything. Moving her body can help with the, improve the lymphatic system, detoxification, delivery of oxygen to the cells for cancer and for COPD, and moving her body around will help her regenerate connective tissue. While she's doing that, it wouldn't be a bad idea to throw in a couple of the glucogel caps now that I think about it. That can help her rebuild some connective tissue too. It'll also help her digestive system. All right, and there's lots, lots, lots more you can do. Uh, don't, of course, the Healthy Star Pack, as I said. Uh, if you want to do one more thing, and I don't know how open she's to, to doing this, IV vitamin C for all cancer issues, intravenous vitamin C. And you can look that up, and a lot of doctors will tell you it doesn't do anything, and uh, some doctors will even have the nerve to say it'll interfere with your chemotherapy. If it was me, I would be insisting on intravenous vitamin C. And these days, there's, I've noticed, there's a lot of these IV bars, they call them, where you can get actually come in off the street and get IV therapy. You don't have to go to a hospital. You don't have to have a doctor's appointment. They just, it, they just do IV therapy intravenously. I don't know if they have that in Austin. They probably do have it in Austin. And they got a few of them here in Denver and in Boulder. But uh, I'm sure they have them in Austin. IV vitamin C can be very helpful. There's tons more you could do, but that's a great start, Cody. All right, buddy? And I, I had a um, one more one more family member got high blood pressure, um, okay. arthritis, and diabetes. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk about high blood pressure, arthritis, and diabetes. All of these go together. All right, it's all a result of di the diabetes is the fundamental reason why the blood pressure goes up and also involves breakdown of tissue. And then, of course, the digestive system is linked to diabetes. So everything your grandmother, I said for your grandmother, have this new this family member do as well. But you're, uh, I'd also be focusing on the sweeties, the ultimate niacin, and also keeping the blood sugar stable with more protein, more coconut oil, and less refined carbohydrates and sweets. Do the whole diabetic protocol. Uh, throw that in for your, for your second family member. All right, thanks for your call, Cody. Have a beautiful day, man. God bless you, buddy. All right, let's go to do, do, do Cindy in Santa Cruz. Good morning. What's up, Cindy? Good morning, Jim. How are you? I'm doing good. Speak into the phone, though. I, I want to hear everything you have to say. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, better. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, good. Well, I get headaches when I take the Osteo FX liquid or the Ultimate Calcium. I know I usually take it at night with magnesium. You get headaches, you said? I'll wake up in the morning with a headache. And well, I don't know if I'd attribute it to the uh, to the calcium. I would. That sounds more like a low blood sugar issue. Any issues with your di with diabetes or blood sugar that you know of? Yes, a little okay. bit. Okay, that's what that sounds like to me. But that is... only happens when I do the calcium. If I don't do the calcium, I don't wake up with the headache. Interesting. Well, I can't say why that would occur, but it could have something okay. to do with throwing off your magnesium. There's a relationship between calcium and magnesium. The more calcium you need, the more magnesium you need. So if you're taking calcium, you may be running magnesium deficient. So okay. what you want to do is take some magnesium with your calcium. And there is a little okay. bit in the OsteoFX. Uh, there's a little bit, but you might, want, you might want more. You might not be getting enough. So try doing a little bit of magnesium glycinate or magnesium carbonate or, uh, or actually the OsteoMag, now that I think about it, with the calcium so you can balance that out. That would be how I would do it. But I still, it, I'd be focusing on blood sugar, too. But the magnesium might be something that you want to try. Okay? Okay, thank you. Hey, Good deal. Yesterday, What's yesterday, that? Your show, was, your show was great and on. But when, then at about uh, 20 of 9, yeah. it switched over to their other programming. Yeah, I, I know. I noticed that. But only for a minute or two. This was yesterday you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. only happened for about a minute. 
or maybe oh. 90 seconds or so, and then we went back. But I noticed that I was gone there for about 90 seconds. But okay. we, yeah, sometimes that happens with the internet and we, stuff. We love All right. the show. Thank you, Ben. Bye. Thank you, Cindy. Have a great day. Good to talk to you. All right, Dave in Connecticut. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, buddy? How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Good, good. Um, I have a question about um, methylfolate versus folic acid because of the fact that I have a methylation. That, all, that MTHFR, issue. that whole MTHFR. Yes, yes, uh, yes, that's, that's a bunch of stuff. that's a bunch of hooey. Okay, MTHFR, MTHFR okay. Uh, deficiency is a, a enzyme deficiency based in genes, and it occurs in about fifty people. Uh, uh, all over the world a year, or some ridiculously low number. I don't know the exact number, but it's ridiculously low. However, okay. it can, problems methylating, which is what this is about, and I haven't really talked too much about methylating. Methylating is like a, a methylation is like a little switch that gets turned on on various chemicals of the body. It's like a little key, and it activates chemicals. MTHFR invo- is, is, helps you make that key. And when people have MTHFR, they can't produce the key to activate certain things. And that means toxicity can occur. However, here's the reason why I say this is hooey. MTHFR deficiency only occurs in a rarely, rarely, rarely to a great extent. But it occurs in a lot of people in a, in a minor, to a minor extent. And what they'll do is they'll test for the genes, and they'll say, oh, well, your genes say that you're not methylating. Well, yeah, but the thing is, methylation occurs or doesn't occur based on what we eat and based on how we live our lives and based on our lifestyle choices. In other words, when we're living crappy lives, we're not going to methylate as well. You follow me? And the genes will reflect that, but it's not like you're cursed with it. They make it sound like this is a genetic thing and you're cursed with it. No, the genes respond to the environment. Listen, you guys, everybody, the genes respond to the environment with the exception of a very small amount of genes for eye color and for your hair color and, and such. The vast majority, over 80% probably of your genes, respond to the environment. So the MTHFR deficiency says more about how you're living your life than about how you are. You follow me? That's why I say this stuff is hooey. Now, that being said, folic acid is not the best way to get your your uh, your folate. Food is. And that's why, uh, that's where you want to be focusing attention. However, if you're not eating foliage, then you got to do the supplements. You know, Dave, there's more to say about this. Uh, if you call back tomorrow, I'll, I'll finish up with it. But for now, I wouldn't worry. That's not something I would worry too much about. Although methylfolate, food, food folate is definitely the way to go rather than folic acid, if you can do it. Lots of green leafy vegetables. Okay? Right, I'm gonna, i got to motivate. Thanks so much for your call, Dave. Appreciate it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.